All right, welcome back, guys. This is the MSI Beat It 2014 Global Qualifiers. This is, of course, the Korean Qualifiers. Uh, it's a best of five now, no longer a best of three. It's a qualifying match, which is the most important thing. And I just want to address to the Maru fans out there. He was already playing a game versus TY, and they didn't want to, uh, couldn't contact them to, to stop their match and, like, remake it for us or anything like that, right? Like, so, uh, for the Maru fans, uh, maybe we can get the replays and cast them for you at a later date or something. I don't know, but for now, we're in this match. It's a qualifying match. It's spawning here in the bottom right corner of the map from Jin Air. Give it up for the red Zerg player Rogue. Never right of the blue Terran. It's Gumiho. Gumiho, we just saw take an excellent series off of life in some very, I'd say, frustrating mech games. Mm, frustrating for life. Yeah, frustrating for life. Uh, but you know, for this, the same time, kind of for him, like game number one was such an easy win for life, and we never saw the replication of that in any other maps because, well, Gumio didn't really get caught off guard in the other maps the same way. Um, like, if you remember game one versus life, and if anyone who missed it, he tries to do some cool stuff where he fakes out stim pack and makes it look like he's going bio, but just kind of accidentally forced life into a standard build which countered his. Um, so if he just plays standard mech and doesn't try these, this goofy stuff versus someone like Rogue, I think it'll be okay. Um, Deadwing obviously complements mech really well because you can actually get four bases secured here. Uh, not necessarily the case on most maps. But uh, he, again, we, oh, we we talk a big game about his mech, but Gumio could very well play Bio still. Once again, don't forget, this is what he probably played for about like five and a half years of playing StarCraft. If not more. It hasn't been out five and a half years. Well, I didn't mean just don't, whatever. Don't. Shut up. Lie to me. Don't lie to me. Four and a half, three and a half. My point is that he's been doing it like for so long, <laughs> right? Mech only became more viable recently. And well, it's only the last year, I know, but still, I'd say recently. Um, I don't think we're gonna see. I, I agree that we can certainly see him change it up and go for bio. I just think this is dead wing. He's gonna do that same thing again. You know, go to four bases. I gotta turtle it up. Maybe some other map that is less suitable for mech. Maybe. No, no, wait, hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to think of one that's like really, really bad for Mac, and I can't. <laughs> I'd like say Nim Nimbus you, is okay. Uh, no, I you I don't like Nimbus for Mac. I don't like. Um, yeah, I Catalina guess Nimbus is one of the worst. Either, I was thinking Catalina too. Well, Merry Go Round I think is really good for Mac. Like I think we've talked about this before. Uh, I, no, I think Merry Go Round has the potential to be really good for Mac because of the terrain, but it never gets used properly. I think it's great because the the attack is really really short. Well, anyway, for aggressive mech, anyways, like less turtle mech. But <clears throat> anyways, so I guess we agree on on Nimbus and and Catalina at least. So maybe on those maps, uh, should it get to that point, we'll see him go bio. Well, it's in fairness though, we got the, the dance of the reef right now. Uh, in fairness though, it is such a limited amount of Terran players who are comfortable enough to play mech in a tournament setting. Uh, that you it, it's really hard to make that judgment call because we're basing it off of a small handful of players like maybe we can count on two hands at most type thing, right? Yes It's kind of like mech versus Protoss. It's objectively hard to say what's good or not because you see it out of like three players <laughs> total Yeah, well, I don't, I don't know it's objectively hard to say if it's good or not I'm just kind of I think Mech can work for this Protoss when done correctly. You watch someone like Supernova do it. You see it abused it's, Sometimes it's like a one-trick pony maybe but it's got its place in the game. Maybe not as the standard build, but swapping it uh, out. People, I suppose, will debate the meaning of it works, um, but it's just it's a gimmick build. Like that's why Supernova doesn't do it every single game. <laughs> if, if it was really uh, viable, I think he would do it. Like maybe instead of twenty five percent, seventy five percent. But as we saw versus Stork, he didn't do it at all. In fact. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, Rogue doesn't exactly rush to a third base. Uh, there we go. Just enough start it. Uh, but chip down the rocks in the back. Wants to make sure there's no weird shenanigans going down behind us. Same way you can abuse tanks versus Protoss, you can certainly abuse them here versus Zerg. Although it's, uh, I'd say, less common to see that happen. Mm. Still no indication as to what path Gumi is going to choose here. Maybe if he starts stim, that'll, you know, that'll be the first indicator. Uh, Queen's going to have no trouble with these small Hellions. Uh, Yo, know, he takes all the second gas though without a starport. This is a little bit curious. I mean, go for the third CC is fine. Yeah, he's not going to stim. But... He's making Stim to fake out this Overlord, because they like, literally the Overlord just went in and he started Stim, but so he, he might cancel it. Oh, he may actually stick with it though. I mean, I bring this up because we don't see that second not, factory come down. He's not mining heavily off that gas. 
I mean, this is the greatest fake if that's what he's going for, because he's he's invested. He does a lot fake. Into he it. cancels it. Okay. Because uh, also, you usually you usually keep building marines like one at a time if you're going for bio, just out of the built like the barracks is building uh, stim, just because you can if you have the money to. So. Uh, I don't know if this will catch well. I mean, again, this is exactly how he opened versus life with the exact same fake stim. And I, 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 don't, I don't think Rogue is going to notice, like, oh, that wasn't building a marine, like, that was totally a fake, but, you well, know. Well, no, but what I'm saying is, like, it's, it forces life to go into the faster mutas, the banelings, the zerglings, right? And that's what really shut Gumio down. So, Gumio may do this this time, but I think consciously with the idea of getting a Thor out sooner. Because, uh, if you recall, it was the two siege tanks dying to the mutas, that was the GG, not so much the lings or the roaches or anything true. else. That's true. Uh, Rogue does get faster mutas, though. You know, he skips the, uh, you know, the earlier upgrades to go for them. So while at the early yes, they are a little bit earlier, and Gumi will want to make sure that he's prepared for this, because, you know, the professional Terran players have these timings in mind, um, for when they go bio, for when they go mech, as to when mutas are most likely to come into their base, unless they scout something differently, so... It's gonna want to take note of that. He might just start off with a... Well, no, he starts off with a siege tank, so... Maybe two siege tanks and then a Thor, just precautionary. That's what he, he did last time. Scout. Oh, but the Overseer actually comes back in. So he's going to see that's, uh, you know, he got faked out. It is going to be mech. Third factor he scouted confirms exactly what's, uh, what he's up against here. So I don't mm -hmm. know if he'll cancel the 1-1. One, one. This can be effective with the Ling run bys and such, but uh, this Hellbat Ooh. push. Yeah, one thing Life made sure to do was get an emergency Roach Warren. Uh, whether or not he use it was a different question, but this time Gumio just, I mean, this is a Hellbat, <laughs> like, build. He just has Hellions and Armory, so why not? The drones! Oh, the drones! Uh, he's gonna focus on the spire. I actually love this move. It's all it's oh, I would say worth losing move. the helmets for. Oh, I absolutely do love that. He rebuilds it immediately. Definitely wants to go into uh as a muted some at oh, some the drones. point. They were like, wait oh, a minute, we gotta gone. move, we gotta move. Oh, that was, damage, if only though. it did splash damage. Or, uh, friendly fire, rather. Yeah. If only it did friendly fire. The woes of Terran. Uh, oh, two no. Nah, there's some aliens here. So, Rogue's gonna hold on to this. He doesn't actually lose much. Three workers go down, but losing that spire was huge. A second spire starts up immediately? What? Okay, cancel. It was just a small mistake, but, um, this is actually kind of a big deal, because we talked about before how it was the, the, the quick mutas that caught him off guard. That's not gonna be an issue. There's two Thors on the way. Gumio's on a third base. Unlike the game versus life, he's actually set here in the early game. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's what's really important. It's not to say that Rogue, because he's going to get four mutas, he's like are automatically behind. You can still do good things with mutas. You still have that map control. Maybe you get a couple free SCVs because Thor's are the fastest thing in the world. And the third base on Deadwing is, you know, kind of kind of far away. You know, it's not it's not Aqualine, I suppose, but uh, he does immediately throw down that swarm host or <laughs> the invitation pit as well. Yo, it's one of the few times the engineering base is going to be part of the wall off, and I'm not going to care because <laughs> he's going back, right? Yeah. Oh, so many times we've just been seeing that be a, a big problem, but uh, of course he's going to need this for turrets and will be unfortunate if he does lose it, but uh, this is a situation where you can just get this, we saw it last time, a beautiful concave of tanks over here to protect that fourth, I mean, three bases is ground mech, four bases is when you make that sky transition, and that's what makes Deadwing make this a uh, little more viable, I guess, than most maps. Hmm. What, with Corruptor Mistake again? See so many one corruptor mistakes. Yo, I, no, I'm sorry. Ever like, I'm I'm dead serious. Ever since Jockey versus Impact, I'll never like criticize that the was... one corruptor ever again. I know it's like a once in a million chance, but I'll never criticize the one corruptor ever no, again. No, not that it was a one in a chance, but it was a mistake. Corruptor, it wasn't. It was an impact with the greatest idea ever. I know. I'm just saying it worked. So I'm I'm a believer. <laughs> I'm a believer. Oh, okay, okay. So it is going to be straight and transitioning into um, the, uh, Swarm Host after the mutas, but he's still getting the Carapace upgrade, right? So I actually really like this choice. So often we will, we still see people go for the plus one flyer weapons because mutas are traditionally the you know touch and go units, so you're not looking to take a lot of shots. But against <laughs> mech, if you're planning on going for a lot of mutas eventually, making them survive longer is better. Give me a, by the way, shout out for the predictability here. Everywhere those mutas went, there was a turret and a Thor waiting for them. Uh, so they really got no damage done at all. Yeah. In fact, he lost, they... I think, like one or two. One. If he put everything that he had in mutas, he can definitely take on the missile turrets. Um, you know, and but bounce the... back away from... Not with the Thor, but yeah. bounce away from the Thor and attack those turrets. But with only at least that he has, you know, it's not, not going to happen. And of course, Gumiho knows these are the only mutas you're going to get. You're going to go into Swarm Host. Just... Well, it's like an obvious, and it's all it, everyone does. Yeah, so tanks come out. You could take technically. Well, it's not, it's not worth it to take on that Thor. 
SCVs would repair it. Uh, I would like to see him knock down the rocks. I don't think you're really going to be that scared of being surgeon that by, but uh, it will also give a quicker reinforcement to the front lines than running all the way around like this. But additional CCs mm -hmm. coming down. Uh, this time there's actually not a lot of turrets. He is starting to put additional turrets in each mineral line, as we can see, but the middleist count not exactly very high. I kind of feel like one turret with a lot of SCVs repairing it will be more than enough. Well, that is the. It's. It's. Uh, Gumio is obviously going to go for that really, really late game attack again. Um, so it's probably more for later on. Because you know that <laughs> yeah. they're going to they're gonna transition back into Mutas at some point. So Life also broke down the back rocks to sneak into Gumio's base, and that's when Gumio put that. Uh, do you remember that one planetary fortress at the natural? <laughs> such, a, such a sick position. So, might see that again. Uh, two marines, by the way, working diligently. They've got about three health, so they must have hit a bailing or something. Uh, might find this mistake corruptor. Oh, yeah. Actually, kills the overseer. Not too bad. I wonder what rogue is going to do differently than life. So far, it looks pretty similar. He's getting more bases. He's getting all the upgrades that he can, and a second spire as well, uh, and going up to high up too. So, I, as we saw, life didn't really go so well with this, right? He uh, slowly got pushed back. Was it aggressive actually... enough? I'm a little bit worried for Gumio. I kind of feel like he's a little too tank light at the moment. Bainlings. Uh, oh, he are... cancels all of them. He cancels. What? Yeah, I don't know what that was about. I guess I misclicked maybe. Uh, but Hellions running by. You know, we're seeing what's different versus life, but Gumio might actually get some Hellion run bys. <laughs> Something he was never able to do okay. any damage with versus life. I said life. different. I meant better than life. Yeah, exactly. So. I know. I'm <laughs> just playing off of that because, uh, of course, he actually does fire a couple drones here. Mutals are almost focused down by the Vikings. Just a Can't little. Can't believe the Mutas. Mutas afraid to attack Hellions because Vikings are there. I just that statement doesn't make. Hmm. It's an uttered. Uh, Gumiho is out now maxed with the regular gun army that we're used to seeing. So I expect to see the starports go down sometime soon, as well as probably the Fusion Corps again. So this is what I'm talking about. Like he's trading out a lot of blue flame Hellions. Like the tank count is good, but it's not enough to push. Is the problem? It's good to defend. Uh, I like these cleaning up, clean up the creep tumors. Cleaning up the creep tumors. Uh, <laughs> that's scan, that really but... work out. A good but idea. He is intentionally going for bailings. Uh, this will be the bust through the Hellbats and the Hellions really quick, which are nice, but I don't know. Mm. They're, they're not the the most necessary buffer. This might really work out because. Uh, Four star ports, yo. I, hmm. Ooh, I really want to see this attack door. happen. I really want to see this attack happen. So he's waiting for the upgrades, I would assume. And then he's going to pair it up with the Locust Wave, kill anything that would deal mass damage to the the, uh, the Lings, which is basically the, the Hellions. And when they're on top of tanks, tanks, you know, they're not that great. So, wow. Well, this is kind of scary. Uh, the back rocks are going to be broken down. And because of his star ports, he actually can't get here to defend too easily. Awkward. Oh, Rogue, 34 bands are on the way. Oh, he's killed oh, a lot so of tanks, though. I'm so interested to see how this is going to happen. He's broken a lot of tanks with the swarm host. This is what I was talking about. Like, I feel like he's too tank light on the front lines. Uh, the Hellions were the buffer that kept the Locusts from dealing massive amounts of damage, but those pulled back to deal with the Roaches. He's bleeding out tanks. I don't think he recognizes this either. He's only just now started building three tanks at a time. So many Banelings running in here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's trying God. to split Thors versus Banelings. The only time in the world you ever need to do that. That wasn't that great though, when the Hellions obviously are also alive, they're like, hey, are you late? Oh, yo, Rogue <laughs> getting supply blocked. Uh, this happened versus life, perhaps not to, not as bad as versus life, of course, but uh, this is what I was talking about before. If you get behind in siege tanks, it's really hard to recover. I almost prefer those Bailings not being Bailings, but, you know, half of them maybe Lings. Maybe yeah. would have maybe, maybe, maybe killed the Thors, maybe. The upgrades were oh even God. at the time, I think, previous he's, finished. He's moving towards the corner of the map, Zombie Grub. He's moving towards the corner of the map. Not again! Well, Rogue is try he's, uh, trying to fill the rest of the supply with me to take on these Vikings. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> if, this is, if he gets down here. Oh, the Overlords are running. They know what's up. Rogue's like, no! <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have enough Mutas, though. 19 Mutas can take on those Vikings. Um, Hellion's getting a decent run by down here. Sadly, the rocks are actually left up, so... Uh, they oh, bring the Overlords towards the Mutas. This is the, such a dumb, slow chase on the minimap on the side. Oh, my God. SCV's been sacrificed once again. Like, what is people like watching this game for the first time? Are be like, what is happening on the left side? There we go. <laughs> it's just it's blob versus blob, and it ends up that blob's an overlord. I see here. I'm like, go. do you know how good I would feel like getting this? I mean, give me how not just in one game against a, another very talented Korean player, but in two games kills multiple overlords. There we go. You just come in. They're gonna get all the Vikings. Um, 
This might be bad. The Raven count really not that high. The Thor count. I he's actually kiting pretty decently for Samira's. That's great. That's great. Like he's gonna lose the Vikings, yeah, I feel for right. sure, but he's gonna take out so many mutalisks for it. Yeah, he managed to make that pretty darn good. And Rogue, not really with a lot of a lot of bank. It's whoa, not whoa, like whoa. he just traded. How on earth did like sneak up? Oh, through the back rocks. It's a couple it's of. Not a whole lot. next to missile turret. Like, what are you expecting? Like. Uh, uh, but Hellbats managed to get to the main as well, so both players kind of trading out a bit of damage for a bit of damage. No one really taking devastating damage from this, but the tank count is up. This was what was really scary for Gumiho. Uh, when he lost those tanks to the Swarmhost waves, I did not, I truthfully did not think he was going to recover off of it. Now, with the amount of Ravens that he has, his Viking count getting back up there as well, the um, other transition is not going to work out. No, not with Yamato Cannon coming out. 3 3 upgrades as well. It's got to go back to. Fungals, maybe. Like, I don't think he can ever push in and win, Rogue that is, but when Gimme starts moving out, maybe he gets lucky Fungals on the Ravens, the Vikings. That's a pretty big maybe. Ultra's Cavern will barely live by the looks of it, maybe. But that is that is what it comes down to, isn't it? Like, the lucky Fungals in these situations. Well, you say lucky, but I think, like, one of the things we often see out of most Saren players is, like, that, that desire to just dive with the Ravens and you're like, oh, sick, these swarm are out of position, I'll throw in some Seeker missiles or something. And that's when you do the fungal, right? Rather than, say, lucky, quote unquote, I think you can certainly bait them in some scenarios. Morris, if he's being sacrificed right now. And this is the, this was the problem. This was a big problem before. Ooh, these Hellions actually get on top of the uh, swarm there for a second. Um, where, versus life, because Gumi only had about 20 workers, he had such a huge army supply lead. Like, not a little bit marginally, but like a huge army supply lead. And that's what really allowed him to start overpowering. This honestly looks like the exact same game all over again. Pretty much. Yeah, I'm not feeling so hot for Rogue if that is the case. He doesn't seem to have any ingenious plan that is different than life's. The bailing was kind of a cool move. Obviously, it did not work out, and it looked it took up a lot of his bank, especially his gas bank. And he's going for it again. I, I don't know why. But ten strings go down. Uh, these units will not get a lot done. Vikings getting some good damage off. It's weird too, because you never see Vikings be effective versus Mutas, right? Like, in the years of watching StarCraft 2, it's usually the Mutas that tend to win those fights out, but... Well, the uh, Raven Count is pretty damn high. It's also got a lot... They've also got a lot of energy. They've only had to put, the, like, what, two-point defense turns this whole time? Mm. Battlecruiser count racking up here pretty quickly. Uh, this time, what's really scary too is Rogue doesn't have the same bank Life did coming into this. Life was able to make, like probably close to 100 Corruptors over several waves because he had so much gas. Rogue's actually sitting here with like 3k, 2k, which is not that impressive when you consider uh, the situation we're in. Yeah, he was a lot slower to expand than Life was too. Life was already on the, the base that just finished for Rogue and you know going on to the one in the very bottom left. <laughs> Like, Rogue, please, get some spine claws up. Yeah, there we go, now I'm gonna put a bunch down. Because uh, these Hellion runbys, they, they shouldn't be forcing the Mutalus back. They shouldn't be drawing them back the way they are. Uh, Yamato what Cannon is... is done, by the way, as he pushes forward here. What is Rogue's plan here for the Battle Cruisers? I need, a, I need to see someone just absolutely, like, shred this army. Oh, the Or maybe the on top of the Terran OP train. The get destroyed! Oh, God, disgusting. I need some Scourge. Mm. I mean, I've been loving the counterattack potential behind this, right? Like, he keeps throwing Lings up the back door, but he's walled this off with the tank. Uh, Gumio is really taking all the precautions in this game not to get caught off guard. That's a huge corruptor swap, though. Uh, there's not going to be turrets down like we saw before to protect this, but there are still Thors that'll help versus the clump. The battle cruisers don't take too much guff in the first place, but the Viking counter feel is still just an insanely large amount that this is not that big of a threat. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not so worried for Gumiho. <laughs> this is uh, pretty identical to last uh, versus life. Although, honestly, Gumiho may be doing better, faster than he was against life. Like, maybe uh, hold it on. You know, more. if I'm rogue right now, I'm like, am I really going to have to deal with this for five games in a best of five? Oh, like, I know, right? He's like, no, F this. Like, all in every day, bro. I, oh, the pulls are very good. They actually were, yeah. Uh, Point of Fencer is a little bit late to the party, but he's got so many Vikings once again. With Yamato Cannons, he'll take out a good chunk of these. Good transfuses, though. Or maybe it does better. But, well, you know, there's a better spread than maybe life had. So the Thors aren't adding that much more damage. A lot of point defenses are down, stuff. but he's just like the Corruptors aren't really dying yet. And he's not kiting with the Vikings at all either, which I, I kind of am not a fan of. But the Battle Cruise is reinforcing the front lines. There's more Yamato cannons available. Uh, 17 more Corruptors on the way. But the problem is, is every gas, every mineral he sinks into the Corruptors is something he doesn't really have to stop the tanks. Oh, Gumiho! Gumiho's out of money. Mule drop, bro. 
Where's uh, you know, he doesn't have that, he doesn't have that fifth base like last time. He's moving it over right now. He has so many orbitals and extra command centers. How do you not have the move drop potential? This is actually really dangerous because, oh my God, uh, Gumio, make no mistake, guys, is actually in a very scary situation right now. He has to drop these mules. Not like he wants to or should. It'll give him an advantage, but he has to drop them because he can't deal with the remax. Play defense is going down once again. Ravens are pretty dry on energy. There's a couple more PDDs left in them, but. Uh, will these corruptors break it is going to be the big question. Corruption goes nope. down on everything, but they are forced back once again. Okay. Mule hammer is dropped. There you go. Row. There we go. Now he's going to have lots of money to go ahead and win this game with. Money, money, money. Uh, as he pushes forward here with the Vikings, uh, he's getting a little bit cocky away from the point of defense. Fight with the Battle Cruise is probably his best bet. I love that he left the tanks behind this, though. He could unseage and move forward and get greedy, but that would cost him potentially to the swarm hosts. This is a situation, though, where for both players, the delicate bank balance for both right now, once one person gets broken, they're going to stay broken. Well, but Gumio's starting to get up there. I the, just, I, the... Yeah, I don't think Rogue can break in this fight to supply lead. There's too many point defensers. They've regained a lot of energy behind this, too. Uh, and even then, it's, it's all corruptors, right? Like, so much supply corruptors. Auditors, please. He is starting to clean up a lot of the Ravens. Raven count was at 10, now only at 5. Battlecruisers are eventually going to go down here. The Thors, they're really trying to help out, but the spread is pretty good. Battlecruisers coming in, though. Oh. Okay, that's, that's enough. Five Battlecruisers still alive. You know, I've been wondering why the Battlecruisers haven't been getting repaired. It's because the stupid SCVs have been running around repairing the point defense drones. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, that's why they're SCVs, right? They're not the smartest. Whoa, oh. TY3 owed Maru. Oh, wow, that's impressive. Seem like pretty fast. Oh yeah, for TVT no less, but uh so that would make TY one of the first people to qualify. Oh, Big here also 3-0 journey. Yay, also is. But yo, power to the Terrans, the Korean Terrans that'll be in the final tournament. Ooh. Hells yeah. TVT all day, bro. I mean we're probably okay, not so... casting that, but still be exciting yeah, to watch. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> be exciting to watch. Rogue is on his last ditch effort here. Gumi was this about is... to start teaching up his tech and his bases. Yeah, the problem really comes into the fact right now that he's just, he can't break this. I mean, there's no investors, there's no chance of a fungal growth. Can anyone rip in? What is the, what is the answer that we're all seeking for this? I still this? feel strongly, like, it's not about the fungus for the battle cruiser. I mean, okay, look, you can't use infestors because the tanks are not the infestors, right? But if you can get those Vikings, there's been so many situations That's where we watch Gumeo dive. Right, That's I mean, what I've been saying too. It's 30 damage over, like, 5 seconds. Not a lot of damage to one unit, but if you can catch, like, 26 Vikings with one fungal, 30 damage times 26. I can't do math on stream, but are you kidding me? That's way more damage than any one corruptor. Yeah. Any plus, one Hydros is going to do. You know, they're faster than the battle cruisers. They they try and snipe things, so maybe they get, you know, way too far away from the, the bags of the Thor combo. It's, it does come down like, to These counterattacks have been going on. They, like, because life did the exact same thing. Sort of a last-ditch last ditch effort to get links across the map, right? But, you know, okay, they can't deal with the planetary fortresses, sure. But maybe Lings and Roaches get on top of production. Maybe that's when you start hurting Gumio. Because with every Terran player, a lot of this comes down to their, uh, their, uh, st their, their production, right? Like, that's how you break any Terran player. So you know what, actually, this sounds like a joke, but you know what would have been sick? A Nidus Rome at some point, maybe into the main. Because this whole army's down here, you supply max. What's he going to do? Send the army home? Well, big needs are going down. Queens are kind of helping out as well. Oh, so surprising many amount. But you know what? He killed a lot of the swarm hosts underneath us. So even if the air army dies, oh, they've done their job. It? There's the seven swarm hosts left. The Thor is not targeting the Crothers. Well, no, one Thor is a Crother. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's been focusing down the, uh, the swarm hosts. With only four oh, swarm hosts remaining, yeah. it doesn't matter that he lost the air battle. Because what are these going to do? Become broodlords? Just kidding. There's no greater Good spire. Point. It's on the way. Well, Rogue realizes, like, oh, hey, this could have been an option, but I don't have a greater oh, spire, yeah, so I can yeah. go start it. <laughs> this could still be really important, though. They're both almost out of money. Rogue has enough of a bank to build a couple of uh, Rude Lords, and Gumiho only has enough bank to build a couple of Vikings. Maybe in the like best scenario possible, Rogue wins because he can make a couple of Rude Lords and have enough protect or have enough corruptors to defend. Kills the last of the swarm hosts. Maybe. I you, don't even. I, I kind of think, like, at this point, even the Brew Lords aren't that scary, though. There's enough Thors. Yeah, you know, and he's still boosting Vikings, too, and he has all those mules that he can drop. His third, again, and his natural are not mined out. So even if his fourth was uh, under attack, which it's not, he's the one with, you know. Uh, I think Gumio has this game. I think Gumio 
can still throw it, but you're right. It's I think it's his game. He's gonna take a lot of the, uh, the mining income. Rogue's got a massive. He did manage to get a bank mine, this which I do find a bit shocking, but he's got no larva to spend it on, right? Like there's not been injects going on in the main. He's lost so many hatcheries at this point. Like you're gonna, it, it sucks to die with 2k minerals in the bank, right? Six bird lords though. Yeah, this is his last chance. So win the air war against whatever Vikings is gonna be house and. You know, make sure that the Thors don't walk underneath the breathers and kill them. Which is so it's, it's, a, it's a hard thing to do. So well, it's, it's going to be a hard me. decision, too. How do you want to use the Thors? I mean, you could transform them into a high-impact payload mode. It does That's a nice. little bit more versus single target, but not by much. Patron, Patron. Sees the Broodlords now, and now he just has to produce, you know, as many Vikings as he can. Thor's just tickle uh, Broodlords, though, as we see, just not a lot. Yeah, it, well, that's true, but it's just, it's not typical for Gumiho. Gumiho took down all of the mining bases except the one. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have to worry about the Corruptor Remax, so as he starts investing in the Vikings, this will work out for him. Uh, sort of a hidden base ticket up here in the upper left of my side. I do wish he could clear out some of this creep so he could possibly take another expansion, right? Both, like, all of his expansions are creeped up to hell. A Rocheworn being rebuilt? Hmm. I, I mean, they're cheap. Why not? I mean, at this stage yeah. of the game, honestly, cheap is kind of best. Low econ situation for both. The it's one good uh, thing for Gumio is these things are so freaking slow. He'll actually oh, have a Viking Vikings. army. Yeah. Six <laughs> Vikings on the way. He's going to have 16 Vikings in total. There's 13 Corruptors, which he can actually kite out first, especially with the Thors underneath it. Uh, Gumio wins this air battle, I'd say, no question. Yeah, me too. Me too, and that's going to Gumio will win the game. It's inevitable. Rogue, man. I, uh, I feel free. <laughs> this is like best of five scenario. You're going to have to deal with this. Well, hopefully, hopefully the vetoes uh, play out to his favor after this. Maybe. Maybe. Fight is going down. He's trying to attack with the Corruptors and the Brutalords. So the Brutalords might be able to take down a couple of Thors before the Corruptors have to get in here and fight. Oh, they have to take down the one, but six are left. each other. Stop repairing each other, you idiots. For the Thors. This is going surprisingly well. He Oh, oh, man, the because, yeah, now the Thors are targeting the Corruptors, and suddenly they just they just absolutely disappear. And Gumio is still making Vikings, so that's all that matters. Yeah, that's uh, this game right there, folks. Yep. We have a small counterattack with Ling's going off in the, over on the uh, natural side of the map, but I mean this is the important base to hold, and he does. Ling's getting top of production, possibly. No, raises the depots. Shout out to Gumio, the one Terran player who can raise their depots at 39 minutes into the game. <laughs> Raise your depots, raise your dong. Oh, it's one Vikings to take out three corruptors. Yeah. Uh, massive scans going down, looking for every part of the map right now, just to see what's going on base wise. Uh, doesn't know about the top leftmost base, but probably knows the bottom left was re established. Uh, didn't actually scout that earlier, so. Well fought game. Uh, disgusting mech, etc. aside, Gumio made a lot of good decisions this game. When we saw Rogue approach this, the same sort of, I feel, almost auto attacky, brain dead, like, robot mode that we see. Like, I'm not trying to insult Rogue here, but he just goes with the same huh, strategy we really? see everybody lose the mech with. You're not trying to insult him? Well, I'm not insulting no. him. I'm insulting, like, I guess his units, if that makes sense. Like, it's, it's just, we see. I'm insulting Zerg. Well, it's, it's Zerg has no just... good anti air. Right, well, it's just, we see the same response. Like, Corruptors into corruptors into corruptors, and it never works. And I don't know why. I guess maybe it's like that situation where maybe you catch a Terran player who doesn't have enough battle cruisers or enough Vikings, and that's a scenario where that works. But I, I we see this so often. GG finally called. Uh, give me OTC game number one. But we see it so often in pro play where like it just it doesn't work. Kill them before that ever happens. It's my uh, it's my only advice. Yeah. Early all ins, man. Roach Bailing for the win. Uh, game number two probably going to start up pretty quick here. I don't know if they'll take a small break or not. Uh, if they do, you guys will see abruptly ads. Nope! We're just going to hop right into Overgrowth. All right. This is clearly a series I need my Red Bull for, so be okay. <laughs> okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, map number two on Overgrowth. Uh, what the f... I got kicked immediately. Battling it tonight. Bet on right overgrowth, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you in a sec.
<laughs> oh my god, the battle net tonight is so bad. Uh, okay, Rogue DCs, we'll get this remade real quick. Hopefully Zombie Grove comes back uh, to join us. Uh, awkward. 